So what fire are you putting out today? The first Sunday of 2016, as I was watching a Christian ministry, there was a trio of man, men that sang a song I'd never heard before, and the song was, put out the fire, here comes the glory. Put out the fire, we've found the perfect lamb. Put out the fire. I had never heard that before, but as I heard it, it grabbed my heart. And I started hearing a truth in it, seemingly from the Father above. God told us from the beginning, without the shedding of blood, there was no remission for sin. And these men were singing, put out the fire where they had shed the blood and they would roast the lamb. But back in the beginning, when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, and they immediately started doing their own thing. They started doing their own righteousness. They started putting fig leaves together to make a covering for themselves because they had eaten of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which God had told them not to partake of. And when they did that, they had a great revelation. They realized they were naked. What a great revelation. They quickly put these fig leaves together and they quickly covered themselves because every evening God would show up in the garden every evening to walk in the cool of the day and they would converse together in that time. And that evening God showed up and there was no Adam and Eve because they were in hiding. At that point, they were forced out of the Garden of Eden and God put an angel at the entrance with a flaming sword to keep them from ever entering again. God being true to himself and to his word, however, that without the shedding of blood, there was no remission for sin, took some animals and killed those animals, shed their blood and got the skins and made clothing for Adam and Eve. As Moses was given instructions for how to continue this as they took the children of Israel through the wilderness, he needed to know how to work this out. Without the shedding of blood, there was no remission for sins, and God gave him the instructions of how it was to be done. Each year, a man was to bring a perfect lamb without spot or blemish to the priest, and the priest was to check that lamb over to make sure that that lamb was worthy to be the sacrifice to cover that sin for a year. And when that priest looked that lamb over and was sure he met all the criteria, then that lamb was slain, the blood was spilled, and the lamb was put on that altar for a sacrifice to cover the sins for one year. When that man showed up with that little lamb at that time, the priest never looked at the man. The priest was never instructed to even question the man. The priest had the duty of checking that lamb out. Was there a spot or a blemish on that lamb? He would check that lamb out from head to toe. Was it perfect enough? If the lamb met all that criteria, as I said, he was then slain, his blood spilled, and he was roasted on that brazen altar of fire. This continued for years and years and years until the lamb of God showed up. He came one night they wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, and he was presented to the world. Hebrews 10.3 tells us, but in those sacrifices, in the sacrifices of those animals, of that perfect little lamb being slain, God was not pleased. There was a reminder of sin every year when they would do this slaying. 
for it was not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away the sin of the world. There was a purpose and a plan for that perfect little Lamb of God when he came into this earth. He was the only begotten of the Father. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God was still on target with his word, and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. Jesus, that perfect Lamb of God, came on the scene as the one sent from God to be sacrificed, to shed his blood, and to cleanse us once and for all, for all of mankind who would believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came into his ministry at the age of 30. He started at a wedding by telling the servants to fill up six water pots with water. And after they filled them up, they were then to dip some out and take it to the master of the feast. How many of you understand you can't fill up six water pots with water? and have them dip out of that water pot and take it to the master of the feast. And the master of the feast then would call you over and say, this is the best wine you've had yet at this wedding. Not unless Jesus has given the order to do so. His orders fly in the face of anyone and everyone who try to reason, to calculate, or to figure out how to do something for the Lord or for yourself. All of the things we try to do to make God's word work and all the things we try to do to make it happen for ourselves, we know how to do it, we can take it from here, God. They all come to nothing. It's like stoking the fire once again with our animals of sacrifice that we're getting ready to put on them. Jesus' ministry continued with teaching and with preaching, with healing the sick, with raising the dead, with casting out the demons. And we're told in the word of God that if all the words and the works of Jesus were written in books, the world would not be able to even contain them. We have just a very small portion of what Jesus accomplished. Then came that fateful day when that perfect Lamb of God, without sin, without sickness, without spot, without blemish, was beaten to a pulp. We wouldn't have been able to recognize him. He was beaten so hard. And then he was hung on that cross on Golgotha. And as bad as that beating was, and as bad as all the things he took on the outward for this day and this time, for us as we live in this world in this day, for all of that that he suffered on the outside, what he took on regarding us even for on the inside and in his being, in his body, was even greater than that. That day... Every sin that had already been committed or was being committed or would ever be committed was upon Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God. That day, Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, shed his blood once and for all that never, ever again Never, ever would the blood of animals be accepted to cover sins. In fact, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ can't cover sins. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ washes sin away once and for all, and he has chosen to never, ever remember those sins again, ever. If I go to God today and I mention something 
and I ask him once again to forgive me for anything that I'd done in the past that's taken care of, he would say to me, I don't know what you're talking about. He has chosen to forget it. Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, fulfilled the Word of God. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin. He did that for you and for me, for once and for all, and for all eternity. But across the town, at that same moment that Jesus was dying on that cross, at that same moment, he was saying, it is finished. I am sure that at the temple, there were probably priests there stoking the fire, getting ready for the next animal fire. And the word comes, put out that fire. Here comes the glory. Put out the fire. We found the perfect lamb. Put out the fire. That day, Jesus Christ, the perfect Lamb of God, did a magnificent exchange. Everything we as humans are, he became. Everything that we as humans are not, he paid for. He bought us with a price. It was the exchange above all exchanges. He took my sins and my unrighteousness, and he gave me his righteousness. That's why today I can say, I am the righteousness in God by Christ Jesus. Praise God. So that song continues to sing in my heart today. How many things am I de doing or saying that is trying to keep that foreign fire burning, trying to earn my way? How many other things am I involved in, not because Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, has asked me to do them, but because I know how to do this. I don't need to bother God. And all the while, I'm stoking that fire. I think of the many times I worry, as if worrying is going to change one thing about my circumstances. The only thing worry does is take from today what possibly and probably will never happen tomorrow. But it ruins today. Oh, the many things I've done, the many things I've said to keep stoking that fire. Hmm. But, oh, uh, you're going to have to excuse me right now because I've got to go put out that fire. You see, I'm putting out that fire because the glory has come. I'm putting out that fire because I've found that perfect lamb. I'm putting out that fire. What are you going to do? So if I'm in Christ and he sees Christ when he's looking at me, then he's pleased. We see the culture of the kingdom is actually actually the fruit of the Spirit. It is nothing that I have done, but God has done it all. So receive good news today. It is only from the Word of God that faith comes. And I keep hearing his voice saying, Jan, I got this. So I'm here to tell you he's got it. This is where a different kind of grace enters in. It's the grace that says, I know you are, and I'm going to bless you anyway. From all of us at Sea Life Ministries. Happy New Year!